probably. And then there's the possible 9 to 1. So Wendanski with the AWP not able to spy anyone on A. They all go through the short approach. Neil Zinio though from up above gets himself the frag back. And Yaku who is the only one standing for the terrorist gets killed by Neil in the end. And finally FM Toxic on this very fast push of Arctic capitalize and get themselves back around on the board. So they are not down and out just of yet. They can fight another day and Arctic still has enough money even though Emron is getting a little low on it. They should do fine in the next round and if they win this obviously they get the money back. And there's a possibility of the bomb plant so the terrorists shouldn't worry about the money. The CTs though have it all to do in this round and Windanski with a shot onto Emron opens up the round. Nicely for the CETs, the rest of the terrorists are over at A and they trying to get an entry frag on the middle but no CT shows up there as of yet. They are pushing forward though, trying to get something out of there and maybe they even will go B and face RDL who's waiting in connector and RDL is the man to be faced, gets the frag onto Tim with a headshot of the M4A1, Yaku is now pushing up onto RDL from the other direction and he might get an easy frag, he does though with a 2v4 now evolving Yaku getting it back and the terrorist just trying to plant the bomb, the CT is fully rotated towards A the bomb gets planted, Windanski is up there with the AWP couldn't connect to anyone because he was smoked and Yaku and Timotoys have to stand tall against those four CETs. Timotoys gets one, Yaku gets one, Weber gets one back and it's a 2v1 now. Yaku against Wendanski. Wendanski drops, Yaku needs to reload, Yaku is now reloaded and Wendanski goes down to the AK of Yaku in the end. Great play by Arctic on this 2v4. They didn't allow the CETs to get it back and an 82 scoreline now punishes the CETs for the bad retake and well Wendanski in the end with the AWP couldn't do much about Yaku who had enough time to reload and spray Wendanski down Arctic though just got away with that and FM causing them trouble from time to time not quite finishing off the rounds though and now they need to save again and the terrorists are just storming into the B bomb sites firing onto every corner they can uh, possibly camp into and shutting down three CTs straight away smoking up the bomb site getting the plant and only two CTs remain on the retake and I highly doubt they will even get out any more frags of that El Mikel gets a frag onto Weber and Neil is the last man standing for the CTs it looks like okay he's just working his way around into the bombs and he saves his USP very important save now for Neil not really no it's not a USP well it is stat track attached there and <laughs> that was one of the most pointless saves but well maybe he just didn't want the terrorists to earn that 300 bucks so let's see. I'm still curious what's up with the sound. Is my microphone too loud or what? Um, there are just a few people reporting problems with sound so not everybody is complaining. Let's go ahead with the weapon round first. Adiel goes down to El Mikel. Windanski with a nice close quarter AWP shot but he needs to get pushed by Emron. Emron though sticks back and decides to stay alive for the moment. He's got the bomb, that's why he didn't push, he had risk losing the bomb in front of Wundanski. Now it is planted, no it's not planted yet, the terrorists actually dropped. No, it is planted, oh my god, I really missed that. So, a 4v4 retake, we already had that, Wundanski with a refrag after Timotoys and Wundanski with another nice shot there on the bomb side. his third of the round, he needs to 
push Yaku to keep him away from his teammate and he gets his fourth as well. Windanski with a nice drop there from above surprises the terrorists, took him right out and the bomb goes out, uh, goes up though. Weber was not able to defuse it in time. I thought he was uh, on it for the time that Windanski was going to cover him against Yaku. But obviously Weber wasn't on the bomb straight away, so the CT still lose the round, and that's a real bummer for them. They had a really nice retake on this 4v4, and still couldn't capitalize on the round, so the rest of the team has to save. Windanski stays with his AWP, and Weber obviously um, gave up his weapon because he tried to defuse the bomb, and it was just a few seconds not a few seconds, a few milliseconds, I should say. And that kept him from defusing it successfully. And the CTs actually start off that save round nicely again with two frags. So it's a 3v3, Vertigo picked up an AK. And Windanski again with the AWP gets a frag onto El Mikel. A very important one as well. The bomb is dropped and out of the hands of the terrorists so they really need to work it out now they need to get a get a route to this to the terrorists uh, to the bomb and the CTs obviously stack that place Vertigo and RDL get damaged by that huge grenade by the terrorists and Yaku now pushes in gets a frag onto RDL Vertigo though shuts him out and this is only Timotoys and he gets covered by Windanski a great save round by FM Toxic Getting back onto Arctic, not letting them run away too much, even though it's still a 10 to 3 scoreline. And <clears throat> we need to take a look at the scoreboard because as we are uh, having the pleasure of casting ESEA, they will obviously reset the, uh, the stats on the half time. So Windanski with 11, Yaku with 13, El Mikel with 11. <coughs> so Windanski really putting up the numbers for his team still FM Toxic wasn't able to clutch more than 3 rounds and Windanski with another tag El Mikel down to 8 HP already now gets, goes down to Vertigo nice team play by FM that call obviously by Windanski enabled Vertigo to pick up the frag And a 4v5 now in favor of the CTs. Let's see if FM Toxic can get to the 5 to 10 scoreline. That should be doable for them. But let's see if Arctic can shut them down and put them in their place straight away after that round. The CTs won. Yaku pushing forward into B, the rest of the terrorists are making their way onto A, they probably want to fake, but Weber is there in the pit, gets a frag onto Tim, puts out the nade into Emron as well, Emron down to 63 HP on this, what I would call fake, but when Dansky didn't know that Emron was running around the corner, now got him, and Yaku from the other side of the side goes back into the bomb site A, where I was thinking that they should attack B, and they plant the bomb, lucky plant there for Arctic. The CTs completely got fooled by them. Yaku pulling it back with two frags, in fact, after planting the bomb. And now he can get his third as well. RDL is there. Stubbornly trying to run to the bomb side. And Timotoys finishes the deal onto Neil. Another great effort by Arctic. Yaku and Timotoys getting four, uh, getting this 4v2 situation. Arctic just has to rely on those single plays by Yaku. And then they are fine. 11 to 3 now. And as you can see, Yaku got 16 frags. Timotoys got 12. Windanski with 12. And Vertigo with 9. So, while at the, re at the defense of Arctic, or even the re-rotation through B onto A, getting into the back of the CTs. Nice strategies there by Arctic, ob obviously. 
and FM now with the mixed by Vertigo and Windanski with the AWP. Vertigo with the opening frag, so they still stand a chance of reaching the 4 to 11 scoreline. And Arctic work in every direction. They've got one player at B, one in middle, or actually they've got three in middle. They just were at A and Weber. Oh, he barely missed a frag onto Tumatois. 5 HP remaining, but Neil with a frag onto Yaku makes it a 5v3. And FM Toxic proving to be strong on the save rounds. And the four spies. Neil gets the frag. Emron kind of has a lag, still gets the frag onto RDL. I don't know what's happening to him at the moment. RDL is a very solid player, as I have uh, seen him in the past. But like that. He's not really lucky or uh, yeah, getting the frags where he should get them in any sort of way. And now Emron and El Mikel on another 2v4 situation. Neil though shuts Emron down, pushes him out with a nade and gets the last frag as well. Even though El Mikel made it a 1v1 in the end, Neil was there from the back. And he can defuse the bomb this time with a 4k in this round Neil pulled it back and made FM Toxic reach the fourth round so well what's your what's your um what's your take on this match will FM Toxic be able to get back into the game or not It really looks like a rather short game. So Arctic just had some really impressive uh, strategies on the terrorist side. I'm not sure if they were planned to work out like that or if they were improvised in the end. But for example that one round when Yaku and Timotoys got back into the A bomb site from the back. That was really, really well played by the terrorists. And I'm really curious to see if FM Toxic will be able to pull off something special and get it back to a 15 to 15 scoreline or even winning that match. Of course, it would be quite important for them even though they have the second chance in the loser bracket so it's not all over for those two teams if any of those loses but of course they will face elimination in the next match and Arctic in the best position to advance to the winner bracket final FM though with a nice entry into A the CTs didn't have that route covered through the middle everybody was swarming in and now the frags fall into the favor of FM to Toxic when Dansky getting two frags RDL with a third in the round and it's 2v5 El Mikel working from afar getting two headshots now it's back onto a 2v3 RDL needs to stand this time he can't fall and he actually gets a frag there onto El Mikel and he could follow it up with a second onto Emron if he watches out and he does so RDL finally back in the game with three frags in the pistol round FM Toxic win this and make it 5 to 11 so they are manning the comeback train let's see if they will reach their destination or if they will fail and they have a really mixed buy a P90 a Nova and a Galil there in the second round so let's see if that turns out to be a wise decision Weber already spots Simatois from the back in the vents gets an easy frag and well the CT is rotating towards B whereas the terrorists are going towards A a Yaku caught in the middle. T 
him just holding his way while the rest of the city is now pushing back into the backs of the terrorists. El Mikel already in the vents while Emron is coming from the terrorist spawn. If they hurry up that might really quibble FM Toxics. Advance to the A-bomb site. Neil though covering the vents gets a...